In a buoyant real estate market like Toronto, flipping has become big business. Flipping is when you purchase a property, renovate it and sell it on immediately for profit. It can be a risky business and you need to know the market. But if you're a homeowner with a less than perfect house and you need a quick sale, it can be a viable option to sell to these flippers. But the danger is you are not going to get the asking price you want. Christina's house has been on the market for over a month, which is rare in this part of town. It's an up-and-coming area close to the Toronto downtown core. Her house is on for $279,000. Seems like a bit of a bargain. Other houses in the street have gone for between $380,000 and $480,000 in a week. But Christina's not having any of the same luck, and she's got to sell soon because she's moving out of town with her son, Alex, and she's getting married in a couple of months. I'm a bit curious about this one. I don't know why it's not selling, but hopefully with our help, we should turn it from unsellable to sold. I'm from Romania. I decided to come to Canada for a better life. I was eight months pregnant. I came, not knowing anybody, started a whole new life. What? You want some milk too? I bought this house two years ago, um, getting married, and I have to sell this house as soon as possible. I only got two offers that are too low for this house, for this location. I am very surprised. When I sell this house, I will be very, very sad. It is my first house. It's something that I did on my own. But at the same time, I will feel relieved. I can go and move on, and I can go for the next step in my life. Christina bought her house 22 months ago for $235,000, and now it's on the market for $279,000, which is bang on, really. However, after one open house and close to 70 viewings, she's only had two offers from flippers at $240,000 and $250,000, and she's not going to accept that. Either there's something really wrong with the house, or there's something that's putting potential buyers off. Hi. Hi. I'm Sophie. I'm Christina. Really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, come in. Thank you. This is the living room. Well, it's a lovely big room and nice high ceilings. Good to see you've got a fireplace. That's a nice selling point. We should probably make more of it, make it more of a feature in the room, because at the moment it's, it's hidden by that big old sofa. Now, what is this extraordinary looking uh, device? This is the doorbell. Does it work? Yes, it does work. And the noise that it makes, it just like this. Right. And I can hear it from the whole house. No matter, and I know that somebody's at the door. And this is the kitchen. Nice, a good sized kitchen, but it's not a new kitchen. <laughs> we can see the piping in there, and also yes. quite a lot of piping over there. That, that's the hot water heater. It's always good to show people when they come around a house that the boiler is new. But maybe if we box it up a little bit. I mean, this kitchen, it does, it does have a, a, a lot of charm, actually. But I do feel like I've gone back in time about 60 years at least. The good thing about it is it's a good size and it's got natural light. Yes. It so yes. we can work with it. Okay. Okay. I'd really like to see upstairs. Okay. After Let's you. Go. I'm glad we're going upstairs. So I wanted to point something out that I noticed earlier when I first walked in, but I didn't want to, you know. Mm -hmm. That is not a good look. I think we can take one out. Two is just greedy. <laughs> Up here we have three bedrooms. This is my son's room. It's typical boy's room, cars, robots. That's right. And this is my bedroom. Fair size, definitely, but there's not really a continuation in the colour palette. Blue, black, pink, purple, brown. And I don't know if we can do anything about the strip lighting, but I hope we can. It's bright, I can read it in the evening before I go to sleep. So. <laughs> that you can. <laughs> it is incredibly <laughs> bright. Well, where are we going next? Spare bedroom. I get a nice big size, but I don't think it looks as big as it could because of the furniture. Okay. But not too much work. Okay. And I think I'm, <laughs> the stuffed dogs are going to have to go. <laughs> it doesn't really scream chic bedroom, <laughs> does it? Now I've had a look round, I've got a clearer picture of why this house isn't selling. Oh, good. I think what would be good if we had a sit down and we can just go over the things we need to change and... Okay. Well, you can Sounds tell good. me what you think. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's do it then. I am not surprised that this house is crawling in flippers. Good location, good size, but the kitchen is ancient. No wonder the first time buyers are running for the hills. I think we've got our work cut out with this one. You're a pretty ambitious lady. 
getting married and moving house at the same time. Yes, I do. So it's exciting times. Yes, it is. <laughs> the new start in life. What we need to do is to make this house appeal not just to flippers who are going to put in low ball offers, but to first time buyers. I think the problem at the moment is a lot of first time buyers are walking in and being put off by the amount of work they have to do. The good news is upstairs easy peasy. Window dressings, new linen, painting, making it modern and sleek. In the foyer, we need to turn it from whoa to wow. It's the first thing people see, so it needs to be impressive. The bulk of the work that we're doing in the house, as you know, is on the ground floor. The kitchen, most important room in the house in my opinion. We're just gonna make it look modern so it, it doesn't look like a pre-war kitchen. World War II. Okay. <laughs> so it looks... <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> yeah. What we want to do is cover up all the exposed piping, modernise the cupboards, and we're taking the table that's in there, putting it in the dining room mm -hmm. in here, and giving it kind of jazzy, modern cafe table. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. In here, we're going to remove the furniture replace it with smaller pieces, which will be more in keeping with the size of the room, make it look bigger rather than smaller. And we're going to make a real focal point of the fire. So when people walk into this room, they go, wow, lovely high ceilings, fantastic fireplace. All the work we're doing over the next couple of days is to make this house appeal to the first time buyers rather than the flippers. So people aren't scared off by the amount of work. Let's go and do it. Yes. I have my opinion on why this house is unsellable. I'd really like to talk to Christina's real estate agent, Hans, and get his thoughts on the situation, and also ask him why this house is attracting so many flippers. Thank you for coming, Hans. I wanted to get your professional opinion, because you know this house back to front. Who do you think this house would appeal to? This house uh, really appeals to first-time buyers and flippers. And flippers. We've had 70 showings, and they just... Uh, I think out of 70, probably 50 were first-time buyers, but they were put off because of the work. Unfortunately, no offers from first-time buyers. Majority of the people like the location, the neighborhood, but they're not happy looking at the house the way it is. What is it about this house that attracts the flippers? This is a very hot location, so the flippers want to come in here, do the renovations, uh, decorate the place, and make fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars. So can you tell a flipper when he walks in the door? The flipper actually, when he walks in, he either has a contractor with him or he himself is a contractor. He has a measuring tape in his hands. They just go through the house looking at all the negatives and in 10 seconds or 20 seconds, they know this is the house for them. So we're here to kind of do the flipper's job. Well, we better get on it then. Let's hope Christina is able to break even, if not make profit. I've spoken to Hans and he's with me on this one. We both think that potential buyers are being scared off by the amount of work they think needs to be done. But Christina hasn't had the time or the money to carry out these small changes, so I'm really pleased we're here to help her and Hans get this place sold. Because I want her to start her new life without this house hanging around her neck. I brought you to this house, Christina, because it's similar to yours, but it shows really, really well, and I think it will give you an idea of what we're talking about. It's not brand new, but it's fresh enough to appeal to first-time buyers. The trim's nice, neutral colours. Also, the sitting room has a bit more of a focus, and that's what we want to do in your house, by moving the sofa and making the fireplace a feature. Now, through to the kitchen, as you can tell, it's not a new kitchen. But the thing about it is there's no exposed piping, it's a nice colour. The finishing touches are complete, because I think your kitchen's scaring off some of the first-time buyers. So upstairs, it's similar to your house, three bedrooms, bathroom. Now, this is the master bedroom. Clean, freshly painted, simple, decluttered, basically ready to move in. What we want to do is we want to move from flippers to first-time buyers, and to do that, we need to make sure the finishes are complete. One thing that this house has going for it, everything's just done, it's move-in ready. This house sold for almost double the price of your house. What? In three weeks. You're going to do that to my house? We're going to do our very best to make your house shine. We've got a lot of work to do to make Christina's house first-timer friendly. And general contractor Anthony says is just the man for the job. Anthony, come in and 
give us your synopsis? It's a bit of a mess. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay, there's a couple things that I noticed. Uh, first, the faux brick wallpapering. It's got to go. So instead of taking it all off, we'll just cover it with some tongue and groove pine. Well, that will look really nice, and it will look kind of country cottage as well, which will be good. Yeah. Match outside okay. of the house. That sounds good. And the next thing was the fireplace that I noticed. OK, the cover is a little big and intrusive in the room and very outdated. So we'll just remove it, and then we'll use marble, which is non-combustible, and then we'll transition to wood. Mm -hmm. Right? The marble is going to look really beautiful. In the end too. really good. So the kitchen is the major project. How are you going to turn that from pre-World War II to present day? Well, the hot water heater is a start. We need to box that in. We're going to build some shelves beside the heater as well. Nice. Right? The cabinets, they don't go all the way to the ceiling. So I think we'll just box with MDF up to the ceiling. There's a lot of pipes that's exposed in the ceiling and holes that are there as well. So we'll just try and close all that off and just clean everything up and make it look much nicer than what's there. Upstairs is just cosmetic stuff. New window treatments. Uh, I think we're going to take away some of the furniture to make the rooms look a bit bigger. Declutter Alex's room. OK. And having said that, I think we've got a lot of packing to do. Too much. Too much? Mm. Yeah. Well, I think we should get started then. OK. Aha! The wainscoting. It looks brilliant. Yes. Tongue and groove pine. How are you finishing it off? Here is going to be a really nice chair rail. Uh, how's, how are you doing with the walls? Because they're higgledy-piggledy. They're all like on an angle. The challenge is to keep trying to get this stuff straight. So um, lucky I'm using tongue and groove, mm -hmm. right? And then the chair rail is actually going to help hide most of the wonkiness in the wall. Brilliant. Rock. Rock on. Yes. Cool. And have you turned off the breakers? I did this time. And then what you, What do you do now? OK, you pull the wires down. See the morettes, the yellow morettes? You pull those down. I'm glad my mother isn't watching this. <laughs> right? Right, and now just pull the wires off. Now I just pull the wires off. <gasps> wow, look at that! Wow, that's amazing. So, um, marble is done. Mm -hmm. I've lined it with cement board, steel studs, non-combustible material. Uh-huh. Um, so, this I'm going to take and I'm going to use it here. Right. Right. I broke this piece of marble. So I'm just going to use the broken pieces and make a heart. I think the marble is going to really add a bit of class. I think it will be looking lovely when it's finished. Yes. If Christina's going to turn a profit on her property, we've really got to beat the house flippers at their own game, and that's going to be a tall order. This home, which is right around the corner, actually was flipped and for a huge profit. When it was purchased, it was very similar to Christina's. But the flippers have turned this century-old row house into a big league showstopper. This home is smaller than Christina's, but the main floor is very open and brilliantly designed. The chic urban styling makes for a jaw-dropping first impression. And the original brick wall was incorporated brilliantly. This kitchen is open and fully updated. No clunky old appliances and no exposed utilities. And the dazzling staircase helps define the space without chopping up the layout. The dining room is cosy but functional and very well defined. The lighting, the accessories and the view, simply spectacular. 
The design theme continues on the upper floors, where clean and fresh paint colours provide a high contrast canvas for the dark contemporary furniture and accessories. The bathroom is small but superbly designed. It was truly a rags to riches story for this old row house. This must have property sold in nine days for well over the asking price. This place is really coming together. I think Christina's house has gone from fixer upper to turnkey property, which is going to make it much more appealing to first time buyers. The exterior of Christina's home was a bit of a cottagey feel, so we used that charming spirit as a jumping off point. The old, over furnished, and cluttered living room has been given a fresh country feel. The soft greens, accented with creamy whites and real wood textures, provide a delightful and truly irresistible first impression. Christina's kitchen bench set matches wonderfully and the retro lighting is picture perfect. And, of course, we've upgraded the fireplace, which has become an impressive focal point. The faux brick panelling in Christina's stairwell was in bad shape and not to mention bad taste. But we've freshened it up with some wonderful off-white wainscoting and we've removed the double banister to accentuate the width of the stairwell. Christina's no-frills wartime kitchen was mouth-watering for flippers but terrifying for first-time buyers. So we've simplified and minimalised with a major declutter and a fresh coat of paint. We've replaced the bench dining set with a cute table for two which really opens up the space. But most importantly, we've closed in all the utilities. In the master bedroom, a new and simplified layout has made a big difference. The updated design scheme has matched nicely with the existing furniture. This guest room was just chaotic and kitschy. Now it's soothingly smart, less furniture, clean surfaces and friendly muted tones. In Alex's room, the avalanche of toys is gone and the overall chic country design story continues nicely with fresh, clean greens. For first time buyers, this house has gone from dreary to dreamy and we've done it all for $3,600. We've done a great job in retargeting this property, but to really hit the nail on the head, we've got to go beyond the four walls of this house and put the tools of marketing to good use. If you don't want a lot of flippers viewing your property, use words in the advertising like freshly painted and newly renovated. That will keep them away. Wording is key in getting the right people to view your house. Video sharing websites are now a popular place to show off your home. People can take a virtual tour around your house before coming for the open house and you also know then when they come round that they're interested parties. The online classifieds are one of the best tools that vendors can use for a very quick way to get the message that your house is for sale. I'm really excited to see people's reaction when they see the work we've done. It's got a really great contemporary feel that I think buyers are going to find irresistible. I believe we've done enough work to curb the interest of the house flippers in the area but we need to find out once and for all. So we've invited a professional house flipper to tour Christina's refurbished home. He's never been here before, so I'm anxious to find out what he thinks. Hi, I'm Sophie. John. So, what are your thoughts? You obviously know what you're up to. Yes, I've just finished flipping a house. So uh -huh. I'm out looking for another house to flip. What do you think about this house? There's been some work put into this house so that it's brought it up to a level that it's, it's not as bad as yeah. uh, I was hoping. Uh, the floors were finished downstairs. You can see how the, the walls have been painted and fixed. Work has been done on the stairs. Mm -hmm. The electrical's already upgraded, the furnace okay. is upgraded. So there's more things that are good with this house and that have been fixed up than, than what I could make money on. So it's not a house that I would look for to, uh, to come in and try to flip. And how much do you usually hope to make in terms of profits? You don't really want to go much lower than 10% no. after you've put on all that work. So the search continues for a new house to flip. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for coming round anyway. Thank you. Now that's a relief. Sounds like we've thrown the flippers off the trail. Christina's real estate agent is going to be thrilled. Hans, the last time we were sitting at this table, it was in the kitchen. Yes. It's a bit of a change. A lot. <laughs> Do you like it? Absolutely. It's, the house has been transformed into a modern, nice, beautiful house here. John the Flipper, he wasn't so keen. He wa probably wanted to buy the house before you guys had done it, and now for him it's out. We've added the value for Christina, so he can't, yeah, it's not much for him to do now. Yeah. So you're confident that you can get some first time buyers through the door who are going to fall in love with it? Definitely. This is out from the flippers are out from here. Flippers no more. No more. Talking about buying, do you think that um, Christina will be able to get her asking price now? I'll know in the next few days, but she'll definitely get 
much more than what she was hoping for earlier and probably if not full asking price at least very close to that that's a job well done in that case I think Christina's house is well on the way to becoming sellable. Now we've transformed it into a great little starter home that will appeal to first-time buyers. Yes, my style is totally gone. <laughs> totally gone. But I really like the colors, and with all my furniture out, the living room looks double, double size. And I like the new decor, new design. The kitchen is too white for my style. But if other people will like it, and if that's what will sell. I like it. I think it will appeal to first-time buyers. Flippers, hopefully, they won't see much opportunity in it. I certainly hope I'm gonna get the price I'm asking for it. Since the dramatic transformation of Christina's charming old home, it's been attracting a lot of attention. What's more, the attention's been coming from real home buyers instead of flippers. Great news for Christina, because not only is she likely to make asking price, but her and her son Alex will finally be able to embark on the next leg of their remarkable journey together. The world of real estate can be unpredictable, but whether the market is hot or not, one thing is a given. If your house shows well, it will sell quickly and for top dollar. If potential buyers are walking in and getting a bad impression or no impression whatsoever, they'll walk out the door, and that is a sales opportunity missed. Tony and Gary's house is not a bad house, but after over 70 showings, two full months on the market, and six really well-attended open houses, it's obvious there's a problem. Now, it's listed at $469,000, and judging by the amount of traffic through the door, it's competitively priced, and this is a desirable neighborhood. So, what's the problem? Tony and Gary need some answers, and they need some answers quickly, because they bought another house, and if they don't sell this one, they're going to be paying not one, but two mortgages. But that's why we're here, to turn this house from unsellable to sellable. Boys! Dinner. We bought the house three years ago. We needed more space. We were a growing family. The boys were getting bigger. This afforded us almost a 1,000 square feet more than we originally had at the old house. The reason that we're moving is a new subdivision means new houses. Everything is fresh. Everything is new. And there's no neighborhood feeling that I grew up with, and that's what I really like. A little bit bigger property and the, the bigger trees, huge trees. It's been fun planting here. And, yeah. You know, we try to start a few trees in the backyard. Mm -hmm but we killed them. <laughs> We've had an opportunity to purchase on a street that we love, we decided to jump on it. We have to sell now because within six weeks, we could be trying, you know, having to hold on to two mortgages. We can't understand why it hasn't sold. The house is beautiful. I have no more ideas. <laughs> This four-bedroom family house. It's three years old, it's close to the town, the schools, the highway, and this makes it really popular with young families. However, the real estate market in this area has slowed recently. Houses are on the market longer, and buyers have more choice. Oh, nice so to meet right? you. Nice to meet you. OK, who's going to lead the way? I will. OK. okay. We've got our living room first. It's nice and decluttered, which is great, which makes my job easier. It does have a good flow to it. I have to say, I wouldn't mind putting those sofas in a time capsule. <laughs> Sending them back where they came from. <laughs> anyway. I'll help you. <laughs> OK, well. But they've been barely used. Stylistically, they look like yeah. they've seen many a Sunday. So let's go through to the dining room. First thing I'd say about this is that, that cabinet is quite overpowering. I noticed it from way back there. I know, but I like it. It has a lot okay. of things behind the doors that mean a lot to me, and I don't know where else to display them. I'm not asking you to put it on a bonfire or anything. Just maybe think about parting with it for the moment. Through here, nice clean kitchen. Why is there no table? Somehow or another, the table with a thick glass top got broken. There was no real push to go and buy a new one? No. No? no. Wow, this is a great room. Lovely, it's got five windows. Beautiful, so much light, going straight onto the garden. I think we can do something with it, though. Next, we've got Ben's bedroom. He's a hockey fan. Yes. Large. We might tone down the hockey a little bit. This would be our ensuite bathroom. Great to have a shower and a bath, but it kind of lacks a bit of wow factor. It's the country cottage picture, it's the angel. We want to give it a feel of a high-end spa. Really push it to the next level. Okay. All right. This is our master bedroom. Uh-huh. It's a good size. 
Ooh, hello. I just love the cupboard. It's huge. But at the moment, it's not singing to me. I think it's lacking that extra something. I want this room to shine and look different to other master bedrooms down the street. I want to give it some va va -vu. That'd be awesome. Now, I've had a tour. I think we should go and have a little natter downstairs. After you. Don't look so scared, Gary. OK. <laughs> Sentimentality is one thing, but keeping a ratty old sofa for over 20 years is another thing altogether. Unless we do some serious upgrading in this house, Tony and Gary's house is just going to merge into all these other ones, and it certainly won't be popping. I want to begin by saying that I appreciate the work you've done. You've decluttered, which is great, and it is so clean and tidy, especially important for viewings. It's been exhausting for two months of running around after my kids. You said you've had over 70 viewings. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is a huge amount. That is a very high volume of viewings and it hasn't sold. A lot of the furniture is aging the house. The sofas just look a little tatty, a little shabby. Right. We want to make it look new and modern and snazzy. The bare bones are here. I mean, the fact that you've got a big master bedroom, ensuite bathroom, walk-in closet, those are all good things. I just don't think at the moment it's standing out from the other houses that are for sale. When you live on a subdivision like this, you've got a lot of very similar houses, so there's not much to differentiate all of them. What we need to make this house do is shine, especially now, because the market, it's stagnating a bit. So your house has to be really special to go quickly, and that's what we want to happen. Sounds good. I'm certainly looking forward to it. OK. Well, that was easy. Tony and Gary have made some smart steps in preparing their home for sale. They've done a great job of cleaning and decluttering, but sometimes in a competitive market, that's just the beginning. I'm off to meet Ruth Quinn, their real estate agent now, who also is Tony's mum. Now, Ruth, Tony and Gary said that you've had almost 70 viewings. Yes. So there's got to be something that's not right about the house. I don't think there's any wow factor about the house. It's a little dated because of the furniture. So presumably you've talked to them about those two ancient couches in there. It's a joke to us that uh, Gary won't get rid of some of the furnishings that yeah. they acquired from us. He thinks furniture is just fine the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. So when you give your advice, they're just like, oh, that's mum being fussy, rather than the advice of a, a real yeah. estate agent. Yeah. Now, when I came in to the subdivision, I saw there's still quite a lot of building work going on. How does that affect the situation for this house? Well, it gives us a lot more competition. This house, I think, is a great house, but we need to make it pop. We need to make it stand out from the rest, and I think it will go. You better go and make it pop then. Oh, I change into my jeans now, do I? I'm going to be helping. <laughs> and then we've got the open house. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get a lot of people through the door. We should do. Fantastic. I look forward to it. Mm, me too. There's shabby chic, and then there is just plain shabby. I thought it was a good idea to bring Tony and Gary to this comparable house. It shows well, it's got wow factor, and it was a winner in this competitive market. I want to bring you to this house because it's in the neighbourhood. It is a bit bigger, but there's a lot of features that really show well. So come on through. Now, the kitchen, there's been some updating. It's not the basic kitchen. The owner's put this nice tiled backsplash on. It's very nice, really, it is. Beautiful. Also, it's an eating kitchen. There's a kitchen table, so it just has a nice flow to it. So come through to the sitting room. The good thing about this room is the architectural details have been added. Along the top here, they've also replaced the Builder Basic light fixture and put a chandelier in. Yeah. Nice. OK, come on. This is the master bedroom. It's a similar size to yours. Nice paint job, very neutral. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous wooden floors. The owner put in all the wooden floors himself. So the lesson from this house is basically taking Builder Basic and upgrading it a bit. It works. These it floors works. pop. They do pop. Can you do a popping sound? The work you've done to your house already is great. The decluttering is fantastic. But what we need to do is go that extra step and turn your house more from builder basic into sophisticated. And this is what the owner has done here. It really stands out. It's been successful in this case because this house sold in 22 days, and the average for this area was 40 days. So that's half the time. Mm -hmm. And ours has been even longer. Yes. Well, let's get out of here. OK, come on, then. 
To reach beyond Builder Basic at Tony and Gary's house, we're going to need to call in our very own builder, who is anything but basic. I was speaking to you earlier about how we want to turn your house from hmm to wow. Anthony is the man to do it, so take it away, Anthony. OK, it's pretty much the same house that you bought from the builder, right? You haven't upgraded it in any way. No, not at all. That is what we're going to do, is try to give you upgrades that will separate it from all the other houses that are on the street. Mm -hmm. So starting from upstairs, just neutralizing the colors, changing over the light fixtures. In the master bedroom, change the window dressings. And then we walk in closets, it's a nice big closet, but it just needs to be more functional. In the ensuite bathroom, we just need to make it a little bit more sophisticated. So we'll just upgrade the lighting, put a new frame around the mirror. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. In here, we're going to change the light fixture and put some paper shades in the skylights because I'm sure they heat up yes. in this room and yeah. you can't actually watch the TV. <laughs> And in the kitchen also, we're going to hang some pendant lights over the sink and change your faucets just to upgrade it a little bit. That sounds like a lot of work. Well, we better get going <laughs> then. Anthony, I'll leave you to it. Okay. Come on, guys, I've got a job for you. Anthony, yeah. I'm here for my spa date. Oh, really? <laughs> You're a little early. I am a little early. Yeah. Snazzy mirror. Yeah, I just uh, finished staining uh, this wood and urethane in it, so I'm just installing the frame around the mirror now. Uh -huh. It's hot, isn't it? It is super hot. How much did that set you back? Um, probably maybe $50, $60. Seriously? Yeah. Because I saw pretty much that same mirror in a shop, and it was like $220. I can believe that. Ooh, $140 saving. Oh, it looks great too. And, oh. Over wow. here, this, you like? I do like. Um, this is just some MDF uh -huh. that I just added to the front of the shelves to make them look chunky, more luxurious looking. And the, the new pot light. Yeah. That's brand new, I just put that in. It gives it a very modern look, spa-like. Spa-like. But it looks like I'm gonna have to come back for my six o'clock facial, which I is a shame. Yes. You had your towel and everything. I you did have like my towel. Totally ready. Look at that, the whole clan is at work. Oh, yes. So, what do you think of the room now? The cabinet's not here. It's huge. Yeah, it's, it's really, big. really big. It's pretty. Tony, so that's a thumbs up from you? Yeah, I think it's great. Makes the room look so much more elegant and spacious. What do you think about the other rooms? They're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. They're doing a lot of work in the master bedroom en suite. I think it's amazing the amount of work that's getting done up there. It's tons and tons and everybody's working so hard. It's awesome. It's awesome. Well, not long to go to the open house, so... We better get moving. Better get, better get moving. moving. Well, I better go and do something <laughs> useful. So, guys, what do you think? A bit amazing. It is amazing. The thing I like about downstairs, or actually the house generally now, is that it's kind of quite feminine. Yes. Whereas before, I think definitely the scales would tip to the more masculine side. I'd say so. Well, you know the saying, the house is the woman's and the garage is the man's. Yeah. That's his room. The rest of the house is mine. Yeah. And I go there when I'm told. <laughs> Gary, to the garage. Yeah, quick, right. Double quick. <laughs> Oh, there you are in the walk-in closet. Yeah. His, hers. Yep. It's all very organized. And where are the dresses going? Right here. Brilliant. Because you get a full wall. Yeah. So this is where you put your shoes? No, actually, I'm building a big shoe rack right across the bottom. That's fantastic. Right? Yeah. Were they difficult to put up? No, actually. You get this whole system, and then you attach the top rail, and then all these tracks just hang off the top rail. And then you can just organize it however you want. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I'll leave you to it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. This custom closet is going to help give Tony and Gary's home a competitive edge, which can really help move a property in a slower market.
This house, which is fresh on the market, has great bones, but its decor has been brought up to an elite level. The living room has a nice new trim and a great paint color, but the contemporary furniture and updated decor gives this room the high-end finish that a shabby two decades old couch just can't provide. In the dining room, it's easy to focus on the chic furniture and decor when there's no bulky, sentimental furniture dominating the space. The kitchen is quite a bit smaller than Gary and Tony's, but every inch has purpose. There is no dead space in this kitchen. The granite countertops, the sunken sink, the breakfast bar, all these wonderful additions are the difference between uh, we'll see and must see. In a competitive real estate market, little details go a long way. But enhancing every aspect of your home's decor will make it pop out in a crowd. So when it comes to finishing touches and decor, leave no stone unturned and you'll stone the competition. At Tony and Gary's house, the finishing touches are well underway. Tony and Gary have had over 70 private viewings through this house, and that is a lot of missed sales opportunities. But judging by the work going on, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. These guys are phenomenal. They're like out of this world. Uh, maybe I could rent them at the next place. <laughs> I can't believe the change in my living room and dining room. It looks so sophisticated. It's beautiful. It's warm. I really feel that our, our home now has something special to offer. And now I know what the word pop means. I know what um, make it stand out means, make a difference from the other homes. I know what that means now. Tony and Gary's house's first impression was really falling flat, so we've dumped the old couches, warmed up the paint colour and added some lush new window dressings. Now this home's first impression reaches far beyond builder basics. In the dining room, everything but the lighting fixtures had to go. Now the bulky cabinet no longer dominates the space and the contemporary new dining set has taken the starring role. This colossal kitchen should have been a huge draw for prospective buyers, but all the dead space was a huge turn-off. We've hidden the ocean of tile with a cute little dining set and a nice new lighting fixture to create a lively and functional space. We've replaced the standard issue faucet with a higher quality piece. In the great room, this cut-rate lighting fixture just didn't cut it. This fixture matches the decor and adds a much-needed touch of elegance. The master bedroom is very neat and tidy, but the styling was decidedly no frills. A rich, warm paint colour and dramatic new lighting has created an alluring, luxurious room. The new window dressings are a perfect fit, and Anthony's custom walk-in closet is very impressive. The decor enhancement follows right through into the ensuite bathroom, where warm colours and new lighting fixtures have turned this room from economy prefab to high-end spa. In the boys' room, the hockey paraphernalia is gone, and this soft and inviting decor has maximized their potential. Tony and Gary's house always had great bones, but now it truly stands out from the suburban pack. The total cost for this job was $6,000, which may seem like a lot, but in a stagnant, competitive housing market, it takes a little extra investment to give a property an extra push. If you're trying to sell a home like this one, don't forget these crucial marketing tips. If you are selling a relatively new house, buyers are going to expect it to look brand spanking new on the inside, so old and tired furniture is a no-no. A simple and cost-effective way to turn your house from builder basic to sophisticated is to upgrade the lighting. Elegant light fixtures will make your house shine. If you have a walk-in closet, make the most of it. Customize the space and maximize the storage. After all, you can never have too many shoes, just not enough space to put them in. Well, the open house is just around the corner. This house has been updated, upgraded, and I think it's looking fab. But we'll just have to wait and see what potential buyers think. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Sitting room down here. Very, very nice. So what are your thoughts on the decor? Like it. Mm -hmm. Don't think we'd uh, have to paint. Very classy looking. Yeah, and this is great because you've got the two areas here. Mm -hmm. Good for entertaining. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Come on through to the eating kitchen. Very nice. It is nice. Lots of cover space. I like the lights. This is very nice. It's good size. Yes, yeah, good size. Oh, this is great. So this is a really great family room. Oh, it's great for the kids. I know, really, oh, really yeah, lovely. And the ceiling's fabulous. It's very, very, very nice. Very, very pretty. It's very spacious upstairs. So this would probably be your son's room. Oh, great. This is a good size room. Yeah. Very nice. And through here we have Pretty fabulous master bedroom, I have to say. I like the uh, 
the wooden blinds. Yeah, they're nice. It feels private, like you're stepping out of the house into your own sanctuary. It's nice. This is one of my favorites. Wait until you see <gasps> the walk-in oh, closet. And here is your own personal spa. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very, this is my room. This would be for me. Well, I like the shelving. Mm -hmm. That's nice, too. Beautiful. I love the shelving. Very, shelf. very nice. Very spa-like. Great mirror. Yes. Classic. Should we go downstairs? Sure. So have you been looking for quite a while? Yes, I currently own a semi-detached mm -hmm. up the street. So how does this compare to other things you've seen? It's, it's calm. You walk in and, and the colors are neutral and subtle, and it just, it, it's very relaxing home. The master bedroom is almost like a retreat. So you think this house stands out from the crowd? I think so. It's very well put together, and uh, it's definitely worth another look. Will you be bringing your wife back? My wife will definitely be by to see this home. The house is beautiful. It's pretty close to perfect. I would definitely buy this house because it's a newer house, great space, and everything's new. As soon as I walked in, I thought, what a great house. Brilliant. Beautiful house. Oh, thank you. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I think this might be one of the most successful open houses we've had. Being a real estate agent, you've seen a lot of the houses in the neighborhood. Would you say, in your opinion, this stands out from the crowd now? Above and beyond. Yes, everybody that came just thought it was wonderful. I don't think I'll have any problem having this moved really quickly. Not everyone likes to stand out in a crowd, but when you're selling your house in a competitive market, that's what you've got to do. Judging by some of the comments we got during the open house, this home is going to be remembered and for all the right reasons. Our transformations have turned it from average to outstanding and from unsellable to sellable. Changes are unbelievable. I never would have expected that all this work could have been done. I'm going to bring some ideas with me to the next place. I think people are just going to be in awe. It's a jewel now. It's a treasure amongst all these other homes. I think there might be some competition. Well, there was competition. Prospective buyers came out in droves immediately following the open house. In fact, Gary and Tony quickly received three registered offers and found themselves in the extremely fortunate position of accepting the highest bid. Reaching Beyond Builder Basics sold this property in 24 hours. What an incredible success. First-time buyers often make the mistake of biting off more than they can chew when it comes to renovations. They run out of money, time, energy, Projects get left unfinished, so when you're selling your house in a tough market, no matter how great the location is, you've got to put your personal preferences aside and finish the job you've started. Carmelina's three-bedroom bungalow is on the market for $315,900. She bought the house eight years ago and attempted a flurry of renovation projects, but she now wants to go back to school and change careers and needs to sell the house to finance her tuition. It's been on the market for 22 days without any offers and she needs to find a buyer fast. But that's why we're here, to turn this house from unsellable to sellable. This was my first house. It was exciting and so scary, but I wanted to do it and I wanted to do it on my own. I love this house. I don't want to leave this house, but there are other things that I have to accomplish. I'm going to get my finances in order, go to school and start my new career. I can't register for school if I know this house is still hanging on my shoulders. I don't know when it's going to sell, if it's going to sell and for how much. And it's a little scary. The house is situated on a quiet residential street close to parks in the super trendy Lakeside District. Because it's an up and coming neighborhood, it's still quite affordable, which means first time buyers and young families should be flocking to the door. But it hasn't received any offers whatsoever. When Carmelina bought this house eight years ago, it was a first time homeowner's dream. But then her enthusiasm for DIY waned, and so did the maintenance levels. And that has been putting off buyers in droves. So what we've got to do is revamp the enthusiasm in DIY and finish all the jobs she started. Sophie. Carmelina, nice lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. It's a cute little bungalow. But first things first, I can barely see the house for the trees. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. There's quite a lot of big items of furniture in here, the fish tank, the sofa, the ginormous television. But I love the way there's a lot of light. The jury is out on the glass bricks, though. That's all I'm going to say. But should we move through to the kitchen? You know, kitchens are really important. Mm -hmm. And this kitchen looks a little grimy. The table is almost as big <laughs> as the TV. <laughs> it is. It's a beautiful table, just not right for this kitchen. Did you put these in? 
I did. This is a do-it-yourself job. So you're kind of do-it-yourself fan? I like to try, and uh, sometimes it's a disaster, and sometimes it's a passable job, but it's always fun. It's just the mishmash of styles that I think some buyers are going to struggle with, because you've got slate in here, and you've got one, two types of different laminate, and then you've got the wood, which does make it look a bit haphazard. I have to agree with you there. Now, where to next? So let's go to one of the three bedrooms, which I turned into a computer room. It's great to have a computer room. But from here, it looks old and grimy. You forgot hideous. I wouldn't disagree with you, but that's why we're here. And other than that, it's a good sized third bedroom, fantastic to use it as an office space, and it's lovely that it goes out to the garden. Yeah, it is. So there's positives in every room. We just gotta push out the positives. Okay then. So this is bedroom number two that we use as a guest room. Where the guests sleep in the cupboard. There was a bed here, but uh, I needed it elsewhere. Well, no bed is good for now, since it turns this room into a blank slate, which brings us to the master bedroom. There's a big brown splodge of plaster on the white door, so that's not a great entry into the room. It's not a bad-sized room, and the furniture is in proportion, which is great. But my eye is immediately drawn to the dog bed. Well, that's where my Sasha sleeps. Well, that needs to go. So now I've done a tour of the house, I know what the problems are. And I've got some solutions up my sleeve. Good stuff. So should you go and have a chat? Let's. Brilliant. I am all for DIY, but you have to finish the job. I mean, look, unpainted front doors, tiles that are peeling off the ground. It just looks really unprofessional. And as for that kitchen, it is just grimy. And grime, it don't sell. This house has the potential to be really charming, attractive, retro bungalow. But at the moment, the one thing it's lacking in is charm. Now, I really admire your spirit for, like, going full throttle for the DIY and taking on projects on your own. I think it's really brave. But the problem is, a lot of these DIY projects have been left unfinished. The front door is unfinished. Mm -hmm. The big hole in the door to the master bedroom. The flooring is coming up in so many places. These are things that people notice instantly. They just think to themselves, why should they have to pay top dollar for this house, then fix it up, when they could probably take a house down the road that's in move-in condition? That makes sense. Which leads me to the outside. There's no point in looking lovely inside if the curb appeal is lacking, because people are just going to drive straight past. Mm. We need to sort out that spruce. We need to take off some of the lower branches so people can actually see the house. I'm thrilled. I can't wait to see the outcome. Fantastic. When you're undergoing major renovations, it is vital to consider how these are going to affect the resale value of your house. Now, Carmelina, she started a lot of DIY efforts that reflect her taste, but trying to find another buyer that shares the same taste is going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. Now, I'm off to meet Barb, Carmelina's real estate agent, to get her views on why this house isn't selling. Barb, who do you think is drawn to this neighbourhood and to this house particular? I would see maybe first-time buyers or second-time buyers with a young family. Now, it's been on the market for seven weeks. Yes. And it hasn't had a single offer? No, nothing. For two open houses? Yes. What's holding it back? What's stopping it from selling? It needs updating. It's very dull and lifeless. Because Carmelina had good ideas. I just don't think she had the time and the energy and the money to finish them off. And that's exactly what did happen. She wanted to try minimal money mm -hmm. and uh, just clean a little bit. And obviously, it hasn't worked because right. we've been on the market far too long with no success in an offer. Right. And first-time buyers don't have extra money. So if they can get a house that's move-in ready, that's going to be much more desirable. Absolutely, yes. If the house was in a sellable condition, it certainly would have sold by now because the house has so much potential. So we need to address the curb appeal, finish the DIY jobs. Absolutely. The price is good, so I think there's a good possibility. Brilliant. Carmelina's house is a great example of how some do-it-yourself projects should be left to the experts. And that's why I'm bringing her to this comparable house, because I want her to see the standard of maintenance and cleanliness that buyers expect in this current market. The presentation of the room is immaculate. Yeah, I'd have to agree. And I can't see a single scuff mark. I can't either. I don't even want to sit down anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is gorgeous. I love the floor. Don't want to walk on it. Well, floors are made for walking, mm -hmm. so let's hit the kitchen. OK. Welcome to the cleanest kitchen in Canada. 
I'll say. I wow. Can. I think the colour choice in this room is very clever, which makes the cupboards stand out. It does, doesn't it? They're simple, but they've just got slightly more modern handles on, because they're not that different from yours. No. They've just... Yeah. <laughs> Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> the guest bedroom, two main differences. Beautifully finished floor and also a bed. Function and you get an idea of the space of the room. Yes, definitely. Should you go into the master bedroom? What do you think about this room? I can see that it's simple, it's uncluttered, it's freshly painted, it's clean and very inviting. It's lovely. Carmelina, I heard you say a few times as we were going through the house, a bit too scared to cook in this kitchen, don't want to walk on the floors. Why is that? It's so perfect. I wouldn't want to mess a thing. When you're selling your house, there's a difference between living and selling. Yes. And for that two weeks, three weeks, you've got to be in a limbo between selling and living, and you've got to make sure it's in moving condition, no one has to do anything. All you need is the keys in your hand, open the door, and you're away. That's it. And this house sold in 10 days. Holy cow, 10 days. Now this should make you be hopping and skipping around. I am motivated and let's go to it. Let's go and finish those DIY projects. Yeah. Okie Okay then. Well, Carmelina's ready to get to work and so are we. And to tackle all those forgotten DIYs that have been holding her back, we've called in general contractor Anthony Sayers to get the job done. When I said we needed to put the love back in the house, this is the man to do it. The love guy? The yeah, love guy. Okay. So take it away. OK. The front of your house, we just need to make it a bit more inviting. So we'll start by cutting the lawn, maybe trimming back the trees so you can actually see the front of the house. And the front door needs to be painted. Right. So I noticed that you tried to do some projects of your own. Yes. It looks great, but uh, we just need to finish it up. Right? OK. First thing is mm -hmm. the glass block wall. It needs to go. Really? It's a yeah. little Miami Vice. <laughs> and we'll break the wall right down to the floor, open it right up altogether. We'll also change the lighting because the house is just dark and feeling dingy. Yes. Going down to this slate floor that you have, it just doesn't go with the style of the house and no. the color is a little off. And I noticed that you have peel and stick tiles in the rest of the room. It's not very good at sticking at the moment. <laughs> it's not sticking. Don't peel and unstick yeah. tiles. So we just need to make it a more uniform look throughout. So we're going to put a nice laminate flooring all the way through all the rooms in the hallway and create a nice flow. And once the outside is looking smart and the inside is looking smart, yeah. I think you've got a hot property on your hands. You think? I think. Oh, yeah. Let's get to it. Yes. OK. Oh, my nail spa glass block wall is gone. Oh. No. Yeah, sorry. Oh. It had to go, though. It did have to go. I thought that there was going to be nothing in its place. I was going to take the wall right down to the floor, but yep. it was going to open up the space too much and expose the bathroom door as soon as you walk in from the front door. Not the best first impression. So instead, I'm going to create a faux Japanese-style screen with these slots of wood. We're going to put a top plate and a bottom plate here. And these pieces are going to be spaced enough that a baby's head won't be able to go through because to code is four inches. And then this will wrap around the corner and end at that point right there. This costs under $100, but it's going to make a nice impact and it's going to add style. I think it's going to look fab. I think so too. Sophie said it was grimy and she's quite correct. So, we clean. This is a new laminate flooring. As you can see, it's beautiful. It's economical, especially made to look like hardwood. Great because it's work resistant, wear resistant, stain resistant. Recommended for people with dust allergies because it doesn't have any harmful substances. Fairly easy to install. You actually just hold it up. Snap it in, click, it's done. With the flooring all sorted out, we're on our way to fixing up Carmelina's unfinished DIY projects, which were holding this house back. 
This comparable bungalow in a similar neighborhood is DIY free and full of charm. Each room is properly laid out with scaled down furniture that fits the space perfectly. The hardwood flooring is consistent throughout, which gives a great flow from room to room. This kitchen has a similar retro feel to Carmelina's, but instead of scuffs and grime, you're greeted with clean and fresh surfaces and a smaller table that's nested quite comfortably in its place. The bedroom feels airy and spacious with simple but stylish decor that is inviting and fresh. The master bedroom is doggy bed free and simple decor accents add a pop of color. Stylish linens and accent lighting evoke a feeling of calm. The office in the third bedroom is similar in size to Carmelina's but a clean and well-lit workspace is enhanced by the addition of a single bed, which also shows off the versatility of this room. Most importantly, every detail is finished and the house looks bright, fresh and groomed from the inside out. Removing the mismatched flooring has made a vast difference. We've replaced it with this beautiful faux hardwood laminate flooring which looks tip top. And now my eyes aren't drawn down to all the perfections but instead I can appreciate this really nice open plan space. The curb appeal of Carmelina's house was anything but appealing and with that big, ungroomed tree in the way, her bungalow was hidden to potential buyers. But now the house shines from the outside and draws you in from the road. The garden is groomed and blooming, and the front door, which was horribly cracked and unpainted, looks brand new. A much better first impression that has gone from curb appeal to definite curb appeal. The living room was bland and overrun with extra large furniture that looks squished and randomly placed. So we bought new cozy pieces that Carmelina can take with her when she goes, including a charming portable electric fireplace. The outdated glass brick wall was not doing justice to this open and airy space, so we replaced the glass with wooden slats to create a sleek and modern screen-like effect. The once grim and dim outdated kitchen is now brightened up and clean. We scrubbed every grimy surface in here, which made for a big job but one that will pay off in spades. Clean kitchens are a must when you're trying to sell. The old scruffed up cabinets were hard to overlook, but a major clean and paint job and the addition of sleeker looking hardware gave them a more modern feel that buyers will be looking for. To show it off properly, we decide to rent a table and chair set specifically sized for this kitchen so buyers can get a good sense of the space. The only focus in the office before was the cracked floor and dirty and tired blinds. So we've cleaned up and repaired the mess around the beautiful sliding doors. It's crucial to address all repairs, no matter how small, because those details will stick in buyers' minds and will turn them off if they're not finished, especially for young families. Showing buyers the potential for an office space is always a bonus, so we've repositioned a desk for maximum functionality. The guest bedroom was in need of some serious TLC, and we gave it the works. The new serene blue walls now serve as a backdrop to the main feature of this room, the bed. You can't show a second bedroom without the most important detail, and the fact that this room can accommodate a double bed is a huge selling feature now. The master bedroom needed the most love of all, so we said goodbye to the furry dog bed and reoriented the furniture to maximize the space in the room. With the bed repositioned, it shows buyers that this room is big enough for a large bed and two side tables. But it also eliminated the cluttered corner of the room, so that it now feels pulled together and shows as a proper master suite. And finally, the new laminate flooring is sleek and modern, but most importantly, continuous, which, for a small investment, shows buyers this house is move-in ready. All in all, an astonishing job at a total cost of $4,500 was a lot of work, but it needed to be done to get this house up to market standard. Replacing Carmelina's unfinished DIY projects with upgraded details will hopefully give this charming bungalow the chance it deserves at getting sold. Do it yourself is fine if you can pull it off, but a house full of half-finished jobs tends to make most potential buyers run for the hills, so don't start what you can't finish. There is absolutely no point spending time and money making the inside of your house look fabulous if no one can see it from the road. So if you've got any trees or shrubbery obscuring the view, you better do some pruning. Selling your home is emotional, but then so is buying. And a lot of people, they think with their heart before their head. So make sure the first impressions of your house are warm and inviting.
We have updated, cleaned, refloored Carmelina's house. And I think we put a lot of charm back in this bungalow. But in the end, it's what the people who come around the open house think. I think we successfully took Carmelina's beloved bungalow from DIY disaster zone to family-friendly retreat. So hopefully the open house will highlight the updates to get this house sold. Come on in. It's not a bad size room. Yeah, Love the floors. Nice. The floors are fantastic. They are very nice, actually. It just shows that the room is a good size, the fact that you can fit a piano in it, yeah. and you still got room for two big sofas and three tables. Come on through to the kitchen. Wow, this is much nicer than it was. You've seen it before? I did. I've been here before. My wife hasn't. Uh -huh. um, the floors look really good. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Let's show you through to the study, which could also double up as a third bedroom. The backyard is huge. Yeah, it's a very nice size nice backyard, actually. Okie dokie. Well, let's go and see the guest bedroom. Okay. I like the color. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's a nice color. Yeah, yeah it is. It's a good size because you could definitely get two kiddies' beds in here easily or one bed, one cot. Yeah. Shall I show you the master bedroom? Yeah, sure. Now, this is the bedroom for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the size I need. Oh, well, that's a nice this color. This is beautiful. Very nice love color. It, love yeah. it. No, this is perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very nice. Well, I like very it. Nice. I'm glad you yeah. like it. Yeah. Very nice. So, is this big enough for your family? For our family? I yes, think it I is, think yeah. it is. Yeah. Are you coming back for a second viewing? Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. The house yeah. is fine. We have no kids. This okay. is for two people, more than yeah. enough room. I'm very pleased you like it. So, Bob, first of all, what do you think of the changes? I am absolutely amazed. It's fabulous. It's a complete transformation. The flooring is spectacular. It had no flow. No. But now everything flows from one room to the other. The paint colors are fabulous. It's wonderful. How do you think the open house went? I think the people that came in were extremely impressed with the house. It's beautiful. 315 with a house looking this good. I don't think it can possibly stay on the market that long. No, there's no way. This house will sell. So that's fingers crossed for multiple offers. For sure, I'm excited. Well, the open house is over, and I think it's fair to say we put the love back in this bungalow. We've added value with a fantastic floor, we've finished off the DIY projects, and created curb appeal to get this house noticed. So I think we've turned this house from unsellable to sellable. Oh my god. Look at this. I can't believe the transformation. This is not my home. I didn't visualize it, but the colors really actually pull it together. The lines are so, that's my furniture? Oh, wow, this is how it's supposed to be in the first place. The love's back in, I think. Lucky buyers, that's all I can say, lucky buyers. Lucky buys indeed. Since we've given Carmelina's house the update it needed to attract those buyers, interest levels in this charming bungalow picked up significantly, just as expected. With the burden of the house behind her, Carmelina is one step closer to registering for school and starting her new life and career. Selling a house in today's market can be tricky, and when the stakes are high, every detail counts. As a property expert, I know you shouldn't have your house lingering on the market, but sometimes getting homeowners to see the light, it's half the battle. Stephen is a divorced dad who made it big in the high-tech industry and is now following his dreams of becoming an inventor. His house has incredible views of Lake Ontario and it's on the market for $1.3 million. The problem is, it's not selling. But that's why we're here, to turn this house from unsellable to sellable. Well, I bought the house about four years ago. I loved it because of the location. There are locations to die for. The selling point is the view. Well, I decided a few years ago that I needed to focus on this adventure that I had come up with. The idea for my invention is to help deaf people communicate with the rest of the world. I'm starting to need capital to move it forward, so it's, uh, it's unfortunate I have to sell, but I have to sell it to fulfill my dream. I'm running out of money. All my money is tied up in the house. So if I don't sell the house, that's a, that's a huge problem. Stephen's house is situated on a double lot in the Scarborough Bluffs, an upscale neighborhood that overlooks Lake Ontario. 
There's only a certain fixed number of waterside properties and Stevens has an amazing view. On top of that, similar sized houses on this street have been selling between 900,000 to 1.5 million, so we know it's not incorrectly priced. People should be lining up to buy it, but he hasn't received a single offer. There's obviously a bit of a problem. Hi. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Wow. That is some view. It's a million dollar view. It's awesome. But the house is still not selling. It's been on the market for two months. Not a single offer. Not a single offer. This is a fantastic room. It's quite 70s. It's definitely got a retro feel. Mm -hmm. And the wood is quite 70s as well. Definitely is. I think the open plan concept works really well. And the nice thing is the paint colour's not battling with the view. It leads the eye straight out into the garden. It's beautiful. Wow. There's a lot of wood in here. It doesn't scream 1.3 million, this kitchen. No, it, it needs an update. <laughs> it Absolutely. does need an update. Yeah. Yeah. So, where to next? Follow me. Brilliant. Ah, huh. I've never seen a Juliet door inside before. What is it, the door to nowhere? No, it's, it's actually my office. Here's my office. Oh, I love the floor. The original floors. Very pretty. I think we can do something in here. You think we can? It's a little bit dark. <clears throat> Almost and upwards? Yep. Nice size room. It's a great size room. Nice neutrally painted. I'm not a fan of vertical blinds. They're the original. So that's the guest bedroom. Let's check out the master bedroom. What a lovely room. It's a good size. You've got the original floor and you've got an incredible view. What more could you ask for? Well, I think we should get out into the garden. All right, then. It's great. This looks a little rickety. Steven, Steven, Steven. It's just all weeds. It's awful, isn't it? Right. The garden is fantastic, but it does have a slight air of dilapidation about it. I've tried to weed. It's, it's just so overgrown. Wow. That is absolutely beautiful. We can have margaritas. So we don't have time. We've got weeding, painting. The view from Stephen's house is fantastic, but for $1.3 million, people want more than just a view. So if we're going to sell this house, we've got to make sure the interior and the gardens wow just as much as the view. This house has a lot going for it. It's a good size. I like the open plan concept. But obviously, we can't just rely on the view to sell this house. OK. There are a few oddities. The 1950s kitchen was a bit of a surprise. What we need to do is make it livable. I'm not talking about a complete redo, but we don't want them to go running for the hills when they see it. Having two bedrooms on this level, I don't think is enough. This is a family neighborhood. I think if we made the office a bedroom, that would be fantastic. There's a 70s feel, but it's also quite a masculine feel right. here. I think we can maybe soften the edges a bit. Definitely need the feminine touch. Yes. The garden is a fantastic size, but what I would say is the million dollar view is slightly obscured. So what we want to do is make the garden flow towards the view. Okay. Once we've done all this, I think this will be a great package with the view, with the garden, with the interior. And then we can have margaritas and look at the view. All right. When the work is finished. Stephen has to sell his house so he can put the capital toward his new invention to help the deaf. His house has gorgeous views of the lake, where the inside lets it down. It's tired, it's dated, it is not family friendly, and the garden is full of weeds. I've got a meeting now with Kim, the real estate agent, to see what she thinks is going on with the house. Now, what type of buyer do you think is going to fall in love with this house? What would be nice to see is a uh, family buy it or a couple buy it, as opposed to uh, the other option would be a builder. Because the family are going to pay the 1.3. That's right. Whereas a builder would probably want to pay around a million. That's right, okay. exactly. So from the families, what feedback have you had? Not enough bedrooms on the main level. Yeah. And uh, the kitchen, they weren't enthralled with the kitchen at all. But they love, love, love the location, love, love, love that view. So those pros have to kind of outweigh those cons. So I think three bedrooms upstairs is really, really important. Indeed. 
So once we've made the inside slightly more family orientated, three bedrooms, upgraded the kitchen, and made the garden a bit tidier. That'll make the house sing, absolutely, yeah. Okay, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll generate some proper interest in some offers. For sure, yeah, I think Brilliant. that should do it. Steve, I wanted to show you a comparable house in the neighborhood that shows well, but the problem is your house is so unique. It's difficult to find a comparison, but I don't think I've done badly with this one, so come on in. Great, look forward to it. This is one of the two sitting rooms in the house. It's nice and bright, but it's just a touch more feminine, a bit more family orientated than your house. Mine needs a feminine touch. Yes. Now, you know that one of your house's Achilles heels is the kitchen. It's putting potential buyers off, and you've had feedback from people, so you know what it is. <laughs> now, this kitchen, it's by no means brand new, but it shows really well. The cupboards, they're clean, they're fresh, new hardware. So the 50s kitchen out, modern kitchen in. All right. Now, I really want to show you the three bedrooms upstairs. I know what you're thinking. Small. You're thinking small, and you're not wrong. So upstairs, you have three bedrooms all on the one floor, which families want. So having three bedrooms on the same floor is a good thing. That's why I want to turn the study into a bedroom, appealing to the family vote. Right. It's beautiful, isn't it? It really is. The good thing about this house is it's more family orientated. Slightly smaller and slightly scruffier than your house, but it shows really well. And this house sold in six days. Six days? Six days, yeah. But that should make you feel positive, because we're going to create changes in your house. It's going to make it look fabulous. But we do have a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. OK. To help us get that fabulous, updated look, I've called in general contractor Anthony Sayers. Anthony is head of construction, so he's going to go through the nuts and bolts of what we want to do. Great. Great house, by the way. Outdated a little. A little, but it's, it's nice. I like the paneling, but we need to address it by just painting it out to blend in with the rest of the house. Going into your kitchen, your cabinets <laughs> are really outdated. They're really outdated. Yeah. yeah, we'll prime them out, paint them. Make it livable. Yeah. Good, good idea. And your office, I'm going to take the door out and close it in with glass, some nice green glass, so that you can still let light through. Make that a third bedroom. It's a great idea. Let's head outside, because we have lots of interesting things going on outside. Sounds Super. good. Super. OK. First of all, I think we need to address the railing. It's falling down, so we'll just rebuild the whole railing. How are we going to landscape the garden so the eye is drawn towards the view? We're going to start by landscaping the garden, de-weeding it, mm -hmm. exposing the rock garden that's here. And then the other garden, we're going to cut out some of the plants that are there just to open up the view a little bit better, right? Sounds fantastic. There's a million dollar views over there, so let's go over. I've got a great idea. Oh, what we need to do out here is create more of a seating area. So we'll do that by putting down some flagstones, mm -hmm. patio stones. We have a lot of work to do, so I suggest we get in the house and start. looks much more sturdy. Yes, it is, because uh, the original one was nailed, and I've screwed everything together. Screws uh, will hold the materials together. Nails kind of give out over time, right? I've got new pressure-treated pieces of wood. What does pressure-treated mean? It's coated with a special chemical that will help preserve the wood for like 15 to 25 years. Wow. And it's cheaper than cedar. So cheap and long-lasting. Yes. Now, is it going to stay this color? Yes. We're not going to paint it or anything? No, not yet. You have to let pressure treated sit and weather for a full year before you can stain it or paint it. Because the two woods kind of don't really match at the moment. After we finish everything, well, we'll power wash the old wood, and hopefully it will kind of blend in to the new stuff. Well, I'll leave you to it. Looks a million bucks. Well, thank you. Building a stone patio takes a few steps. First, remove the top layer of grass. 
remove a few inches of dirt. Take this great stuff, it's called filter cloth. What it does is prevents any weeds from growing through the patio and it will help for water drainage. Lay your filter cloth over the area and then take this magical stuff, it's called screening. It's like sand and gravel mixed together. Use it to level out the pad as much as possible. Tamp it, make it as compact as you can and then put your stones down. Patio is fairly easy to do, you just gotta get your hands dirty. The garden is looking so much better. We've weeded and taken out the excess shrubbery and that gives the rock garden color and adds structure to the garden. And more importantly, they draw the eye to the view. I'm really pleased. Backyards are extremely important, especially to young families, so whatever dirty work you've got to do to make it look good, it will be worth the effort. This house is similar in price and presented as nicely on the outside as it is on the inside. Aside from being superbly decorated, this living room is sophisticated and gender neutral. The modern decor would appeal to a variety of buyers instead of screaming bachelor pad. The same could be said of this elegant dining room where classic styling will catch the attention of potential buyers. I always stress that an updated kitchen adds value. Buyers looking in this price range expect this level of design in a kitchen, but whatever price your home is listed at, painting your cupboards with a modern palette and updating the hardware is a good place to start. The master bedroom is just as lovely and spacious as Stevens, but it's been accessorized, giving it a higher-end feel. Small details always make a big difference, and in this house, the attention to detail makes it look like a million bucks. Stephen is laying everything on the line by selling his house to finance his new invention. The interior was very dated, and the garden was totally overgrown. But now, we've got rid of the dated decor, and we've done some serious landscaping. I think it's not just the view that looks a million dollars. Stephen's bachelor pad living room needed a bit of a feminine touch, so we brightened it up with a paint job and some simple decor accents. Stephen replaced his dated furniture with new pieces, versatile enough for him to take wherever he goes. The dining room didn't need much work, but by simply adding new drapes and an inexpensive light fixture, we've given it the ambiance which makes people feel at home. Stephen's outdated kitchen was pushing potential buyers off, so we freshened up the cupboards with a coat of paint and added new hardware. You can't underwhelm buyers' expectations with a kitchen that doesn't look like it's worth the price tag, but sometimes a simple update is all you need. We completely transformed Stephen's office into a charming third bedroom, which buyers expect to see in such a large home. Trading in those dated vertical blinds for new drapes really makes a feature out of the beautiful window. As for that strange door that led to nowhere, Anthony's idea to replace it with glass worked out beautifully. The guest bedroom had all the elements it should, but none of the charm. It's important to dress a room when you're trying to sell because you don't want space that adds value to seem like an afterthought. The master bedroom was already a selling feature, but for a million dollars, you want it to look as smart as possible. So we dressed it up with accessories to give it a chic look to match the price tag. And as for the biggest selling feature, we pulled out all the stops to turn Stephen's huge backyard garden into the million dollar oasis it should be. The barbecue patio area needed more of a wow factor. So we turned it into a fabulous eating spot worthy of summer entertaining. The interlocking bricks were weather stained and full of weeds, but a thorough clean made them look like new, turning this patio into the kind of backyard haven a million dollar pad deserves. The dilapidated stairs and railings were unsafe, a huge turnoff for potential buyers. But Anthony's new railing is safe and sound, and after a little power wash, all the wood blends beautifully, making it look like new. Curb appeal doesn't just apply to front yards. You want to make sure the backyard looks just as fab. As for all those shrubs blocking the million dollar view, our fresh landscaping has added the value that this house needed especially now that everything flows nicely right through to the new flagstone sitting area, which is the perfect place to enjoy the vista. 
The entire property now has the look of a million dollar pad, and at a grand total of $4,000, the money spent will now be money gained when buyers see this house for what it's really worth. Matching the look to the price is nothing, though, without a little clever marketing. The kitchen is one of the most important features of the house. But if you don't have the budget for a full reno, a coat of paint and clean surfaces work miracles. It's worthwhile considering buyers with families. So turn that media room back into a valuable bedroom. Families love bedrooms. In many cases, your home is not just bricks and mortar. It includes the entire property. And if you're blessed with a spectacular view, then make the most of it. Cut down the trees, trim the bushes, and open the curtains. Oh, the changes are absolutely amazing. With people coming through in the house, they'll see a, a much more friendly home, much more inviting. The house and the garden are now on par with the view. Stephen's house has been updated, it's family friendly, this place has been transformed. It's open house time, and I think potential buyers are going to be impressed with the view inside as well as out. But there's only one way to find out. Let's open those doors. It's lovely to meet you. Well, come on through. Hey, oh, my God. Wow. wow, this is beautiful. Very spacious sitting room. Oh, Love the beautiful. fireplace. Come through to the kitchen. Oh, this is cozy. Well, this is an original 1950s kitchen. Oh, well, the cupboards are nice. They mm. do have that country feel. We could live in it for a while and see, yeah. see if we wanted to update it or not. It does have that very charming feel to mm -hmm. it. This is really, yeah. really nice. It's a nice little guest bedroom. This used to be a door and the door obviously led on to nowhere. So we've put this glass in, so you get so much light. Fantastic well, you get light from there, too. Yeah. This has been done so nice. It's so bright and light. Oh, this is lovely. It's nice and open. We've got a room for a nice, large dresser. Wow. wow. I can handle wow. waking up here every morning. Mm. This is incredible. It's beautiful. It's nice and big. Now that's what I call a real oasis. Mm. It's a beautiful, it's a very wide lot. It's a double lot, which is quite rare, so it's pretty special. I think it's fabulous, beautiful landscaping. I feel yeah. like I'm in Little Garden of Eden. <laughs> oh, stunning. Simply stunning. OK, oh, that does it. Beautiful. That's worth the price right here. Yeah. Good point. The price is $1.3 million. They don't make houses no. like this anymore. You'll never find a house like this. I really like it. I like that the bedroom is on the same floor. How does it compare to other houses you've seen? More nicely put together, mm -hmm. but the backyard is amazing. Is this something you would consider coming back and having a second look at? I think so. Yes. It's like having a cottage and a house in one. It's beautiful. So you've been looking for a couple of weeks. Has, does anything compare to this? I think so far, this is probably the nicest one right. that we have seen. You've got the house, you've got the garden, and you've got the view. You can't go wrong. Well, will you be coming back potentially for second viewing? I almost guarantee mm -hmm. it. Wow, I love guarantees. Yeah. Yeah. Thank we'll you be. so much. Thank it was lovely so much to meet you. So, Kim, what do you think? Well, I think it's lovely. Big transformation, though. Yeah. Love it. The garden. Oh. That's the coup right there, absolutely. That's just improved everything. The view is wider now. All you see are the beautiful sailboats out there. It's gorgeous, yeah. But I definitely think this house is 110% more sellable than absolutely. it was. Absolutely. I know Steve's yeah. very, very happy. And I know it sounds corny, but the fact is, if he sells this house, mm -hmm. he's going to be putting money towards an invention that's going to help a lot of people. That's right. And I have my fingers crossed for a quick sale. Oh, thank you so much. I think it's going to happen. This house has come such a long way. Now, everywhere I look, it's a beautiful view. The inside's not dated, it's warm and retro, which is in keeping with the 1950s feel. And the garden, it's not overgrown anymore. It's structured and gorgeous. I think we've taken this house from unsellable to sellable. The house definitely has changed. It mirrors the view. It's a million dollar view, it's a million dollar home. Our hard work creating a newly updated look for Stephen's house paid off in spades when interest levels rose considerably. Being so close to a sale means he's much nearer to financing his invention and bringing his dream to fruition. Cheers.
Real estate, like everything else in life, has its ebbs and its flows. And in today's market, house sales have softened. So if you've had loads of viewings and no offers, you've got to work out why this is happening and do something about it. Because in a slowing market, missed opportunities are something you can't afford. Single mum Catherine has her lovely, spacious house up for sale. But it's been lingering on the market for three whole months. It's listed at $449,000. It's had 70 showings and six open houses. She's also recently married Ian, a firefighter, and would love to move into his house, but she can't until she sold this one. But that's why we're here, to put out the real estate fires and to turn this house from unsellable to sellable. This house has been um, a wonderful family home and it's served us really well. So I'm not really sure why it hasn't sold. I'm wondering if there's just no wow in the house. We were hoping the house would be sold around the time we got married. It's very odd that we're not living together. It is stressful. It is frustrating and I do want to get on with my new life. And we just can't do that until this house sells. With parks and the waterfront close by, this area is known as an upscale family community. So, we know the neighbourhood has a lot going for it, but let's see what the inside of Catherine's house looks like. Sophie, hi, so glad you're here. Lovely to meet you. Should we start in here? Sure. Great proportions, lovely big window. Did you choose the peach paint? Well, yes, I had it painted when I first moved mm -hmm. in. Now, this furniture, it looks like it's seen a few summers. It's seen a lot of summers and a lot of children climbing mm -hmm. on it. Curious, did you put this carpet in? No, no, this carpet was here when I okay. got here. I wonder if it has hardwood floor underneath. It does, it has oak. That is fantastic. I do have to say, your house is immaculately clean. So you're on the right track there, but it's not enough on its own. And this is the dining room? Yes, it is. Very nice. But the combination of the armoire and the pink paint, it makes it look a bit old-fashioned. And I don't think I've seen frosted glass windows <laughs> for, for a while. But the bare bones are here, definitely. So, this must be the kitchen. Yep. Not a bad size. Eating kitchens, a big plus when selling because families love them, so that's all great. But what I would say is there's a lot of different textures going on. You've got the oak handles here, the oak at the back of the cupboards, but then you've got brown, so terracotta tiles, olive green walls, but we can do something with this kitchen. You're very tactful. <laughs> I'm not always tactful. <laughs> wow, this is the longest, peachiest corridor I have <laughs> ever seen. Love the floor. Is this the floor we're going to find under the carpet in the sitting room? Yes. That is very, very exciting. Your two daughters' rooms are down here, but it's the master bedroom that I really want to take a look at. So the journey from peach to purple is complete. It's very dark wood furniture. It's quite overpowering in a room this size. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. But good size room. You've got the hardwood floors, which is lovely. But now we go down and we have our little chat. Terrific. Now, this house has bags of potential, but it looked like it was last decorated when shoulder pads and leg warmers were in style. That's putting potential buyers off, so it's time for me to get tough. This is not a lost cause by any means. You've got a fantastic house. Having said that, in a slow and competitive market, you need to address the things that are holding the house back. Because, to be honest, you've got the price tag right, but the decor is not matching the price tag at the moment. In this room, for instance, it's the combination of the peach paint, the old leather furniture, the slightly old drapes. It's not singing at the moment. Mm. In here, I like your armoire, but it makes this room look quite small. And in the kitchen, it's great that it's an eating kitchen, but it just needs some tender loving care. Great. Moving upstairs, the endless peach corridor. It needs to be repainted and put stuff on the walls, make it look a bit more interesting. And people don't tend to like purple master bedrooms, unless they're under five <laughs> or ten. So we want this house to look elegant, to look modern, to look classic. 
and then it will appeal to a broad range of potential buyers, which is important no matter what state the market's in. And you can get on with your life and move in with your new husband. That would be terrific. Catherine has a great house and it's in a beautiful area, but she is going to have to do a lot more to it if she wants to wow potential buyers. Peach walls, grey carpets, fine in the 80s, but fashions change and now the house just looks outdated. So if Catherine and her two daughters want to move house anytime soon, they're going to have to say out with the old and in with the new. Catherine's neighbourhood is quiet and picturesque and they even bury the power lines and the telephone lines so you don't have to look at the ugly blighters, which means it's even more surprising that Catherine's house hasn't sold. That is why I'm about to meet Rose, the real estate agent, to get to know this house just that little bit better. Rose, you'd have 70 viewings, six open houses. It's been on the market for three months. So what do you think is wrong with the house? I think one of the main reasons why it didn't sell was it was too high as in the marketplace mm -hmm. price-wise. So you've already reduced the price, which is important, because often people price their homes incorrectly. Understanding the market and adjusting accordingly is key. Absolutely. Hopefully the new listing price will help, but the decor does need some updating. And first impressions are so key. So with a few modern updates, we're going to have a sellable property on our hands, despite the slow market. Thank you so much. Sophie. Lovely to meet you. And you. Catherine's real estate agent Rose and I both agree that the uninspiring and tired decor is really affecting her sale. And that's why I want to show Catherine a comparable house in the neighbourhood that is not only modern and classy, but also sold very, very quickly. Now, before you say anything, I know this is considerably smaller than your sitting room. In fact, the whole house is smaller than your house. But it's in the same area, and there's a lot of elements of this house that I'd like to implement in yours, starting with the floor. It's beautiful. Also, it's just nice, calm, updated colours. I, I can see what you mean. Now, come on through to the dining room. Now, again, different layout, but similar size. Nice colour palette, hardwood floors. That just gives it a contemporary look. I really see what you mean. Anyway, let's move on with our tour. It's very modern. It is very modern. It's very contemporary. But having said that, cupboards, I don't think they're very modern. They've just been freshly painted and they've got new hardware on them. Really? Yeah. I say it again and again and again. The best way to update your kitchen is to paint the cupboards and put on new hardware. It's an immediate, instant facelift. What I'd like to do in your kitchen is tone down the Mediterranean a little bit, <laughs> and it can look as gorgeous as this. That would be fabulous. Let's go upstairs, then. After you. It's a nice, calming colour palette, and there's not a lot of dark furniture. So it just looks really lovely. It's like a little haven up here. And that's what buyers these days are looking for, especially in the master bedroom. Now, I know this house is appealing to potential buyers because it sold for just under the asking price in 20 days. Wow. Your house has everything going for it, and we can make it sell incredibly quickly. That would be fabulous. OK. Well, let's go and do it, then. All right. We have a lot of work to do, so to help us modernise Catherine's dated house, I've called on general contractor Anthony Sayers. Catherine, I spoke to you earlier about some of the changes we're going to make, the design changes, but I'm going to let Anthony here, our contractor, That's fill in the rest of the blanks. Terrific. Can't wait to hear. We'll start by removing the carpet, expose the hardwood floor that's under there. It'll be just like brand new. So that's brilliant. Yes. Also, um, I'm going to update some of your furniture, mostly the furniture upstairs in the bedroom. We're going to paint it out and add some stylish hardware. Wow. Great. And uh, the kitchen. We just need to tone down the colours and neutralise the style of the kitchen. I think all the changes are going to make a huge difference because at the moment, people are expecting a certain standard when they walk in. They're wanting elegant, modern and classic, and that is what we're going to give them. Terrific. Brilliant. It sounds like we've got a lot to do then. Yes, so we do. let's get to it. Excellent.
Yes, the grey carpet is no more. You like? I love. So what I did was I took the carpet up, I cut it into three foot strips, make it easier to dispose and dump. And then whatever tack strips that were around the edge, it holds the carpet in place. There was a million staples throughout the floor. So I removed them all. And what I've done is I've sanded out any water marks or any damaged area. Uh -huh. Just try to clean the floor up as best as possible and then you're ready to very thin. Is this this milky stuff? Yes. Uh, the key to this, you don't want to shake the can. Right. You need to take a stick and stir it from the bottom and bring it up from the bottom. If you shake the can, it will leave air bubbles, and then once you put it on the floor, the bubbles will dry and it will be a disaster. Then you'll have to redo your floor all over again. No, definitely don't want to do that. No. I am so impressed. It looks a million times better. I think it makes the room look bigger, and from a resale point of view, hardwood floor, so much better than carpet. This looks beautiful, and it's easy to clean. Now you come in and it's like a wow factor again. Yeah, it looks elegant, not 80s. Catherine's house is structurally sound, and that is of crucial importance for potential buyers. But the decor was distinctly uninspiring. But now, the changes we've made are beginning to have a big impact. Pretty amazing what a coat of paint can do. I've taken a sprayer and sprayed this piece. I had four or five pieces to do, so that's why I use the sprayer, and I like the finish that it gives you. You can achieve the same look by using a, a brush and painting it out, but it'll just take you a lot longer. I rented the sprayer from a big box hardware store for $90. Always spray outdoors, wearing a mask and goggles, and use a tart for the overspray. You need to let it dry for about 24 hours, but never under direct sunlight, because it might bubble and peel. I changed the handles to give the cabinet a more updated look. I've transformed this old piece of furniture that they were going to throw out into something sleek, stylish, and looks brand new. Refurbishing old furniture is a cost-effective way to modernize your decor, which will give your house an edge in the marketplace. This comparable house has done just that. It's an older home, but with an updated feel inside. An uncluttered living room with neutral colors on the walls allows buyers to visualize their own things in the space, the first step towards a sale. Hardwood floors are considered an upgrade and are a feature realtors highlight in their listings. And this flooring carries right through to the dining area, creating a warm, inviting flow that buyers will notice instantly. The eating kitchen is the showstopper, modern and obviously updated. But as I've said before, painting your cabinets in lighter tones and giving the kitchen a thorough clean can give off the same great impression as this one. Upstairs, the contemporary master bedroom is painted a soothing light colour and the furniture blends into the space instead of standing out like a sore thumb. Buyers walking in can immediately picture themselves in this house, which is exactly what it's all about when you're trying to sell. Catherine's house wasn't selling because it was looking tired and old, but now with the changes we've made, the house looks modern and elegant, and I think potential buyers will really appreciate its classic feel. Catherine's 80s-inspired living room was putting buyers off, so we brought it decades forward with a little upgrade. At minimal cost, we've replaced her overstuffed furniture with a modern sofa and love seat, which has updated the look of the room. And contemporary pieces make this space feel inviting. New drapes create a feature out of the front window and the natural light coming through. But most impressive are the hardwood floors. Hardwood is a hot selling feature these days and just by ripping up the carpet, we've increased the value of the house immediately. The dining room had few issues, so we simply rearranged Catherine's original pieces, moving the armoire and adding accessories. By taking off the old French doors, we've opened up the space, which gave the main floor much better flow, something buyers will definitely notice. The kitchen wasn't terrible, but it needed to be refreshed, so by painting the cupboards and walls, we gave it a clean, updated look. 
Kitchens are a key selling feature and can make or break a sale, so you don't want buyers feeling like it needs a ton of work. That boring upstairs hallway seemed to go on forever, but by painting the walls and adding some artwork, we've turned it into a bright, welcoming space that nicely leads you on to the bedrooms. The master bedroom's old furniture and purple walls were far from a peaceful haven. So we've turned it into a space that feels as calm as it does neutral, especially with Catherine's refurbished bedroom set. Rearranging or removing some furniture can open up a space to reveal its true potential, a quick fix that doesn't cost a thing. With new contemporary drapery embedding, this room confirms the overall sense that this house is move-in ready. And at a total cost of $3,500, the transformation is bound to attract a slew of new buyers, which is well worth the price. If you have original hardwood floor hiding under ugly old carpet, take the plunge and rip the carpet up because you could be left with beautiful wood floors that add considerable value to your home. If you own outdated furniture, but you're looking for a fresher, modern look, there's no need spending a fortune replacing the offending items. Spray painting furniture and adding contemporary hardware can work miracles. If your house has been listed for an extended period of time, potential buyers might begin to think there's something wrong with it and that's why it hasn't sold. So consider taking it off the market, giving it a bit of a facelift and then re-listing it and that should generate re-interest. It's almost time for the open house and the changes we made to Catherine's home have created a contemporary feel. I think it looks fab, but it doesn't matter what I think, it's what the potential buyers think. Well, that's that. The work is done and it's time for the open house. Hopefully our transformation will create renewed interest in this property. And then Catherine and Ian, the newlyweds, can start their new life together under the one roof. Come on through. It's beautiful. I love the colours. Now, have you seen this house before or not? I did. I saw it when there was snow on the ground. It has been on the market a long time. Yeah. Was there carpeting before? There was carpeting before. How do you know? Because you... I came through it before. You came through it before. It's great. It looks very open, and the floor makes it look much cleaner. Do you like the color palette? Yeah. I don't think we would really be changing any colors, because it seems to have uh, very neutral colors. You've really brought it into the 2000s with the furniture and the mm -hmm. decor. Come on through to the dining room. So the first thing I notice is that you've opened up this space because that used to be closed off. Mm -hmm. And there was a big sign dresser there and it seemed very cramped, whereas it's, uh. it's much more open. I love the mirror. And now it's really bright and opened up. It's like a different house. Glad you say that. Now, <laughs> I think you will notice a big difference in the kitchen. Oh, wow, what a difference. This looks amazing. Yeah, you can basically just move in now. I love it when people say that. The nice little eating kitchen here, too. Yeah, and the handles, too. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Knobs are already there. Yeah. Mm. Shall I show you to the master bedroom? Sure. Sure. I hope you're going to be pleased with the master bedroom. This is fabulous. Wow, wow. That's oh, the old furniture. Same furniture? Wow. Same furniture. Wow. Repainted. What a difference. That looks absolutely beautiful. So all in all, what do you think of the transformation? I think it's fabulous. Yeah. Can't believe it's the same house. Is this the style of house that you can imagine starting married life in your first oh, house? Yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> so you maybe would think of coming back for a second viewing? Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll definitely be talking tonight. I think it's a possibility, and I think I'll bring my husband to come through. Fantastic. I always like showing realtors around the house because you get a professional opinion. So what do you think? I think now uh, the improvements that you've made, it's much brighter and cleaner. It's got a lot of features that people are looking for. The hardwood, you can see the hardwood floors mm -hmm. now. Uh, it's got chic paint mm -hmm. colors all throughout the house and uh, it really shows well. I don't think mm -hmm. it'll last long. Now it's on the market for $449,000. Competitive? I think it's very competitive. Mm -hmm. It should go very quickly. Fantastic. And hopefully you might have a few clients up your sleeves. I'm gonna give them a call when I get out of here. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you much.
Well, judging by some of the comments we have at the open house, this home is showing as it should. New paint, refinished furniture, and a beautifully restored hardwood floor has turned this house from a bit of an old maid into a blushing bride, and from unsellable to sellable. The house is amazing, it looks so different. I recognize some of my old pieces, my furniture, but it looks totally different. It looks modern and contemporary. I'm hoping that the perfect buyer will come in, be very happy, and the house will sell quickly. And I'm really looking forward to being together full time with Ian. So it feels good that the house has a fresh beginning, just like I'm having a fresh beginning. After all the hard work on Catherine's house, I am happy to say that the newlyweds can finally start their married life under one roof. Catherine accepted a solid offer for very close to asking price from a buyer who fell in love with the property, turning it from unsellable to sold.